I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. I welcome and congratulate my colleague Monica Crowley of Fox News, the opinion page editor of the Washington Times Online. Her columns there are to be archived because, as well as the New York Times bestselling author in the past and in the future, Monica in the summer of 2015 laid out a pathway for Donald J. Trump to become the 45th president of the United States. As recently as Monday night, Monica and I discussed that pathway, being very specific about what states. And here we are now that we look at the map, and it's not complete yet. There are states that have to be called. Michigan, for example, is a big one. But that pathway of summer of 2015 and the pathway of Monday night, the 7th, is very much what happened over these last 24 hours. Monica, congratulations and good evening. I won't ask you what your crystal ball tells us for tomorrow. I'm just going to say right now, your confidence in Donald J. Trump exceeded that of all the pollsters, of all the newspapers, to my knowledge, 57 endorsed Mrs. Clinton, only two endorsed Donald J. Trump. What did you see in the summer of 2015 that is now a fact? Good evening to you, Monica. Hi, good evening to you, John. Yes, and thank you for the very kind words. A couple of weeks after Donald Trump came down that escalator at Trump Tower and announced his intent to run for the Republican nomination and the presidency, I was the first national conservative, actually I think maybe I was the first person, period, to go on national TV on Fox News and to come on your program and other radio programs and say one thing, stop laughing, Do not underestimate him. He can go all the way. Yes. And when you ask me what I saw, you know, John, we work and live in Manhattan and the environments of Manhattan. And I pointed this out last night on Fox News. For those of us who live and work in the New York City area or on the West Coast, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Washington, D.C., Boston, this is not normal. When you leave this abnormal (laughs) environment and you go into the rest of the country and you talk to normal Americans who are working hard every day, paying their taxes, and they're simply not getting ahead in a very poorly performing Obama economy, when you talk to them about what really matters to them and how they are personally struggling struggling with economic insecurity and their own families' uh, insecurity, given the, the instability in the international arena and how the threat is now here. When you talk to them about these things, they feel it on a visceral level, whereas all of the pollsters and all of the analysts and all of the mainstream media, they look at all of this stuff from 30,000 feet. They look at it from the ivory tower, from an intellectual perspective, because they're not living this economy and these threats on the ground the way everyday Americans are. What you have seen transpire, not just yesterday in the United States with the election of Donald Trump, but sweeping across the Western world, most prominently with the Brexit vote, but also regional voting over the last six, eight months in France, Austria, Germany, and elsewhere, is the unprotected class, regular people who have to live with the consequences of what the elites inflict on them in total revolt against those elites. And that includes the bipartisan ruling class in this country, which is why Donald Trump ended up being the Republican nominee and why he is now the president-elect of the United States. The remarks, Donald J. Trump last night, very late, early in the morning in the East Coast time, the remarks to his supporters at the Hilton and to the country, because we could all watch it streaming, uh, the remarks were were gracious, generous, humble, convincing, paternal, in in short, Monica, none of which we saw on the campaign trail, but I want to read from them because they're, they're exciting to see. I've watched them again. Said the candidate, now it's time for America to bind the wounds of division. We have to get together. To all Republicans and Democrats and independents across this nation, I say it is time for us to come together as one united people. It's time. I pledge to every citizen of our land that I will be president for all Americans. And this is important to me. Monica, that's the man you would report to me when you spoke to him in person. That's the man you were speaking to right there. Yes, for anybody who still had any qualms about uh, Donald Trump's ability to be presidential, last night you saw it. There it was. I thought his speech last night was pitch perfect. He brought some humor. But overall, he was humble. He was modest. He was gracious, kind, and magnanimous. 
that's what you want in the president of the United States, who is not going to just represent Republicans or conservatives or the people who voted for him, but he's going to represent all Americans. What was critical for him to deliver last night, John, was an inclusive message of change. And that is exactly what he did. He hit it on point. I, I love two particular themes he gave, John. One was about the forgotten man, which it refers to Amity Shale's great book from a couple of years ago about the forgotten man right. of the Great Depression. Right. Um, these are people who came out in droves, in particular in the industrial Midwest, in the old Rust Belt, who have felt dislocated. Pennsylvania, the- Ohio, Michigan, and Wisconsin, right yes, there. Yes, all the yes. states that we've been yeah. long yes, talking yes, about, yes, John, yes. right? Yes. Yes, those are the forgotten men and women who have been dislocated in this new economy, trade deals, all of the illegal immigration, all of the things Trump has been talking about. The other big theme that didn't get a lot of attention last night or today, but I think is so important because I wrote in my book about this for you, years ago. I write it about, about it in my column in the Washington Times all the time. It is the concept of big America. In the 20th century, we used to think big. Franklin Roosevelt, JFK with the space program, Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan, big America with big ideas, you know, pro-growth economically, powerful militarily, strong culturally. We've lost all of that in this mess of leftism, thanks to Obama and the Clinton years and everything else. Donald Trump has pledged to bring back that soaring, not just rhetoric, but reality of big America. Monica, in the speech the, pre- the last night, Donald J. Trump found a theme coming together that is wise to be president of the United States. In the remarks in the Rose Garden within these last hours by pr- the, president, the sitting president of the United States, uh, Barack Obama, he matched it, Monica. He said this, this transition is between Americans. This is an intramural uh, uh, contest we had. It's over. We're not Republicans. We're not Democrats. We're Americans. That was not during the campaign either by Hillary Clinton or the president of the United States, but it was today in the Rose Garden. And that tells me that Donald J. Trump is going to find a welcoming guide at the White House when he travels there tomorrow. Well, when he goes there tomorrow, absolutely. I expect Barack Obama and Mrs. Obama to be uh, incredibly gracious. The way he referred to George W. Bush and Laura Bush as being incredibly gracious and kind, professional is another word that Obama used today, professional. They were professional. Um, And that's interesting. I was on the Fox News set last night with Dana Perino, who was President Bush's last press secretary, and she said, you know, we, in the transition to Obama, we really made a point of being professional and and kind and gracious to them. And she said part of it was because we, when we came into the White House, the um, the previous team had removed all the W's from right. the keyboard. I, I remember that. that. It's still thing. it's a famous story. Very, right. Yes. Right. Exactly. So. Um, yes, I, I think, of course, you know, all eyes are on Obama and how he's going to handle this, and I, I have no doubt he's going to be fine over the next day and weeks. But here's my concern. A lot of people last night, Chris Wallace and others, were talking about how Chuck Schumer, who desperately wanted to be Senate Majority Leader, is still stuck in the minority, how he's now the top Democrat in Washington. That is not true. Barack Obama still is going to lead the Democratic Party. Barack Obama might be moving out of the White House, but he's just moving down the street in Washington. And I will guarantee you, after a little bit of a honeymoon period during this transition and maybe very early on in a Trump uh, administration, Barack Obama is going to start getting extremely vocal. He has told us as much over the last couple of weeks that he intends to not keep his mouth shut. Every time the Trump administration goes to repeal an executive order, Obamacare, any, anything that Obama has done critical to his legacy, you can bet, you know, bet your life on the fact that Barack Obama is going to go to the New York Times, Washington Post, meet the press, face the nation. He will be all over the place. He will not respect the traditional rule of the, the predecessor respecting the successor and keeping his lips zipped. I can guarantee you that. I want to turn to the Republican Party, which is in disarray right now, but will organize itself in a moment. But one more note about the speech last night, Monica. The tone. You and I are on the radio we, and television. We know the tone in our voices. Whatever it is, you can't control it. It's just you. And it's either convincing or not. During the campaign, Donald J. Trump had a very starkly different tone than I heard him from the Hilton last night. Last night... That was a man you sit and speak to and listen 
and converse with. That was a very friendly tone. That's the tone he, he, he speaks to you in, Monica, isn't it? Isn't yeah. what I heard last night? Y- yes, that is absolutely true. Um, I was saying this last night on Fox, too, having worked for President Nixon, uh, former President Nixon, during the last four years of his life. The, he and I used to talk about this all the time. The uh, Campaigning and governing are obviously two different things. Right. But when you're talking about the presidency, the job will change you. But also the magnitude of the responsibility of the job will change you. And when that hits you, before you get into the job in this period, when you're the president-elect, the magnitude of what you are about to undertake, being responsible for the, the safety and security of 320 million Americans, being responsible for putting men and women into harm's way, running an economy, all of these things begin to really sink in and you absorb it. You absorb the magnitude of those who came before you from George Washington on and what the American people and, frankly, the rest of the free world is looking to you to do. That magnitude of responsibility has sunk into Donald Trump, and that's what you saw last night, and that's what you're going to see going forward. Monica Crowley of Fox News, The Washington Times. We turn to the Republicans next, and what is to be done? I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show. I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show. My colleague, Monica Carley of Fox News, The Washington Times Online. She's the opinion page editor, as well as the New York Times bestselling author. She worked for Richard Nixon. She speaks to Donald J. Trump. And between those two events, Nixon in the 70s and Trump now in the 2017, there is a lot of Republican Party that is right now a little disorganized because of the tumult of the campaign. Monica, the Speaker of the House... And the majority leader all spoke very well of Donald J. Trump in these last days, voted for him. Rents Priebus, who is close because this is Wisconsin to the speaker, also worked very hard and was praised from the dais by the president-elect last night. The conservatives of the Republican Party have been at sea these last months. Do you expect the party to undergo more un- unhappiness, or will this reorganize itself? What is your vision now for the party, Monica? Because they're having meetings even as we speak. Democratic Party? Republican Party. Republican. Well, both parties are, are now a little bit in disarray. I mean, the right. Republicans are on sure footing because they now have the White House, the Senate, and the House, so they can really move forward in a proactive way with their agenda. Pro-growth economics, job creation, getting wages moving again, uh, building the wall. So you think victory will heal the rifts yes, that we saw? Yes, yeah, absolutely. And all of these Republicans who uh, expressed... Um, uh, concerns about Donald Trump or refuse to endorse him, they will all come around because he's going to be the president and people suck up to power. They want proximity to power. They will all come around, okay? Just as what we saw with with Barack Obama, you know, there were some Democrats a little reticent. I mean, some were for Hillary early on and the whole thing. They all came around. Um, So I'm I'm not as worried about the Republican Party. The Republican Party had deeply fractured. Trump's mission is to bring them all together, including conservatives, because Trump is, is really not a conservative. He's a populist, and he has revolutionized the party into a populist party. Very interesting. But believe me... Oh, Monica, these... Monica, I just realized something. Donald yeah. Trump just put New York in play for 2020. I'm flabbergasted. Yes. I think we're living in... I think right now, Monica, we're living in a swing state. I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, no, no, please continue. I'm sorry. You just no, uh, no, no. That's that's okay. I was just saying that you know uh, the the outstanding Senate races that we see in Nevada and New Hampshire with Kelly Ayotte yes. that are razor thin. These are the people who distance themselves from Donald Trump. The ones who have fully embraced him won. And that is also a fascinating dynamic going forward, that all of these people are going to want to work with the new president, who's extremely popular. He just redrew the entire electoral map. Right. This is a guy who's never done this before. 
astonishing, the most astonishing political story in our lifetimes. I write about it tomorrow in my column in the Washington Times, so please take a look at that. I talk about a lot of these dynamics. So they're all going to get on board. I am really not the that Republic, worried about The You're not worried about the Republic. I'm going to worry for us a little bit, all right, just, just because the enmity has con- not calmed down yet. Now the Democrats. Just a moment here, because we'll have many months ahead of us to watch as the the two parties learn how to oppose each other because it's all one family right now. The Democrats, you mentioned Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, question mark, whether she stays. And also, are the Democrats now going to go through turmoil? They've been strangely united these last years. Do they now start to challenge the Warren faction in in Massachusetts or the Sanders faction, wherever he is, Vermont or wherever, uh, or do they uh, line up behind Barack Obama and let him speak for them? Well, I'll tell you, the Democratic base is with Obama, uh, uh, Warren, de Blasio, and, and Sanders. Uh-huh. That's where the base is. And you can see them screaming on the streets today, burning the American flag, screaming about uh-huh. Trump. That's where the left and, and this is Barack Obama's Democratic Party. So this, the, And it will continue to be, as I just said. So that's where the base is. Of the party, that's is. not enough to win, Monica. It's that... not enough to win. That is a very small. It's about twenty percent of the electorate, if that. Going forward, I think wiser, sounder, more centrist heads in the Democratic Party are going to have to take a close look at what's going on here. And I'll say this, John. I was going to say it on Fox last night during during election coverage, but we had no time. A lot of people are talking about how Donald Trump is the black swan event. That we've never seen anything like this before. Oh, that's we, we just never, foolishness. Right, that, well, wait, wait. So they're talking about how Trump is the black swan event, right? Yeah. I think Barack Obama was the black swan event because he was a charismatic, um, exceptional black candidate who won the presidency, expiated racial guilt in this country, elected and reelected. And now what we saw yesterday, going with Donald Trump, is a complete repudiation of everything Barack Obama did in the last eight years. So the cult of Obama was the black swan event. And now the country is self-correcting, going back to the great silent majority, going back to the foundational principles. I could be wrong. I'm thinking out loud here. But this was a thought that really hit me last night. The idea, Monica, that Pennsylvania is in play, that New York's in play, that means Jersey is going to be in play. The idea that redraw not only redraws the map, it redraws the assumptions the Republican Party has made since Eisenhower, the conservative country club or the uh, or the conservative activist Goldwater right. That uh, that's all gone now. We have to right. imagine that the. The votes for Trump in Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, and Wisconsin are going to be there in 2018 and 2020 if the party goes and gets them. Well, and especially if Trump is successful. If he's successful in instituting these policies, ripping up these trade deals like TPP, thirty and seconds, there, Monica, and go ahead, negotiating them, and and creating jobs and re- bringing the industrial rust belt back to life. If he is successful in doing this. Oh, he will be reelected across the board, and then the map will be almost totally red. Monica Crowley, much to say. Monica's on Fox all the time, every moment, except for <laughs> when I find her and she's not on set, of, of the Washington Times and the New York Times bestselling author. I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show.